A swap shell is an option that gives the right to enter into a swap at a fixed rate. So it's a derivative on a derivative where the underlying is the swap fixed rate. Swaption can be pair swaption or receiver swaption. Pair swaption gives the right to enter into a swap as the pair of the fixed rate and receive floating. It will be useful in case interest rate rise in future. So entering into a swap to pay a low fixed rate Receiver swaption involves the right to enter into a swap as the receiver of a fixed rate and pair of floating. It will be useful in case interest rates fall in future. So entering into a swap uh, to receive a higher fixed rate will be more profitable. Now, to understand the structure of a typical interest rate swaption, let's consider this example of MPK, a firm. MPK considers the need to engage in a 10 million three-year swap in two years' time. So the timeline is five years and the swaption has two years to expiration. And two years later, MPK is considering to enter into a three-year swap. MPK worries that three years later, the interest rates may rise in such a case uh, if it enters as a fixed rate pair, it may have to pay a higher interest rate. So to hedge this, it buys a pair swaption with an exercise rate of 11.5% today. That has two years to expiration and it gives it the right to enter into a swap paying 11.5% as the fixed rate and receive floating payments. And the swap involves payments annually. Now, two years later at expiration, the following interest rates are observed for uh, borrowing for 360 days, 720 days, and 1080 days. As we are assuming uh, 360 days here, so this is borrowing for one year, borrowing for two years, and borrowing for three years. These are the spot rates for one year, two year, and three year prevailing two years later when the swaption expires. Remember, the swaption is a fixed rate pair swaption. So, uh, the interest rate uh, for a one year uh, is, is 12 percent. The interest rate for two years or 720 days is 13.28 percent and the interest rate for uh, three years, that is 1,080 days, is 14.51%. And these are coming from the spot yield curve two years later. Now, uh, using these rates, the uh, discount factor or the price of a zero coupon bond that has a face value of one is 0.8929. In other words, a bond with a par value of one pound maturing in one year with zero coupon has a current market value of 0 0.8929. Similarly, a bond with one pound par value and zero coupon payments maturing in two years time at 
eight percent multiplied into seven hundred and twenty divided by three sixty has a current market value of zero point seven nine zero one. Similarly, a zero coupon bond maturing in three years time has a market value that is equal to 0 0.6967 and this is because we have the interest rate equal to 14.51% multiplied into 1080 divided by 360 so this is how we have got the uh, prices of the zero coupon bond with a par value of 1 maturing in 360 days uh, maturing in 720 days and maturing in 1080 days we can refer to the first value here as Z1 that is 0 0.8929 we can call it Z1 the second value 0 0.7901 as Z2 and the third value 0 0.6967 as Z3 uh, we are doing this uh, because the swap rate formula is then making an explicit reference to the uh, Z values so here uh, the fixed rate on the swap uh, that has three years uh, is calculated as uh, the swap fixed rate e uh, uh, r is equal to uh, 1 minus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 and because here we are given the rates uh, annually so we will write uh, it like uh, 360 divided by uh, days so here these rates are annualized so if the uh, swap involves quarterly payment then it will be 90 days if the swap involves uh, uh, semi-annual payment so this will be 180 days so uh, this is the formula that we use here to estimate the swap fixed rate. So you see, uh, if uh, MPK did not uh, had the swaption, if it wanted to enter into a swap contract as a pair of fixed rate, it would be required to pay 12.75% as the fixed interest in the swap and will be receiving floating. However, the swaption allows MPK to enter into a swap at 11.5%. That is, it will pay 11.5% fixed and receive floating, which is a much better option uh, compared to uh, a swap in the market where it would be required to pay 12.75%. Uh, so it's obvious that MPK would consider exercising the swaption uh, at expiration given that the market rate for a swap of three years uh, at that time will be 12.75%. Now, what is the worth of the swaption? Uh, we need to calculate that. To value the swaption at uh, the expiration, let's look at the cash flows that it can generate if it is exercised at that time. So if MPK exercises the swaption, it will pay 11.5% fixed and receive LIBOR. Now, MPK can enter into an opposite swap in the market 
to receive 12.75% fixed and pay uh, a floating LIBOR. So now we see that uh, there are two swaps. One is created uh, by MPK uh, exercising the swaption and it is able to pay 11.5% fixed there and receive the floating LIBOR. The other swap is the one where it is receiving fixed 12.75 and is paying LIBOR. So LIBOR received here crosses with LIBOR paid and what MPK is left with receiving 12.75% fixed and paying 11.5% fixed. That is a 1.25% net cash flow each year on the 10 million notional principal which is 125,000. So each year the net savings on the two swaps is 125,000. So it is an annuity. However, remember that this annuity calculation are a bit different than the normal time value uh, calculation as we are assuming 360 days a year and you saw on the previous slide how I obtained these discount discounted values. So if we add the discount uh, factors for year 1, year 2 and year 3 and multiply it into 125,000 it's equal to 297,463 uh, as the value of the swaption. Symbolically the value of a pair swaption at expiration is represented like this. Uh, don't be afraid of this symbolic representation. It's just the sum of uh, all the uh, present value discount factors like in our case here you see we are adding uh, Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 so you can say that these are the present values of the bond maturing in year 1, uh, year 2 and year 3 and we know that these are zero coupon bonds so that sum of those uh, zero coupon bonds values or the present value discount factors is denoted here as uh, starting from 1 to n. So in our case there were 3 so i was equal to 1 and then 3 and we added z1, z2, z3 and whatever we had as the saving in our case it was 125,000 so 125,000 multiplied into the sum of the uh, z values. For receiver swaption, the only difference is in the way the payoff is uh, calculated and we see that the uh, payoff here is now X minus R that is the exercise rate minus the swap rate. A payer swaption is equivalent to a put option on a bond and a receiver swaption is equivalent to a call option on a bond. For example, if we take the pair swaption in our case, we estimated the market rate R for the three year swap as 12.75% here. Now, we then estimated the value of the swaption at expiration to be $297,463. If we assume a notional principle of $1 and then substitute the formula for the swap rate R, that is this bit here, into uh, this formula here, uh, of course the notional principle is 1 and R is 12.75 and X is uh, 
11.5%. So if we replace R, that is 12.75% with this formula here, we can simplify this to get this. That is the maximum of 0 or 1 minus Z3 minus the exercise rate multiplied into Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. Now, if we look carefully, this appears to be the exercise price in a put option on a bond with three years maturity and the sum of this plus this is the present value of the bond that is maturing in three years time at expiration of the put option the bond will have its value equal to the present value of the uh, coupons that is this term plus the present value of the uh, power value for a detailed discussion I recommend that you read the text from the chapter in Chance and Brooks 10th edition. The issuer of a callable bond has sold the bond and purchased a call option where the issuer is able to call the bond before maturity. A receiver swaption is like the embedded call option of a callable bond. Uh, let's see this in figure 13.5. Now here we have a callable bond uh, and it is callable after this time. If the interest rates rise uh, in the market, uh, the issuer will not call the bond and will continue to pay the fixed coupons. Uh, which is indicated here by C. The down arrow here indicates that uh, it is payment of a rate. So here, uh, if interest rates rise, uh, the issuer will not call the bond and continue to make uh, the fixed coupon payments uh, indicated by uh, C here uh, till the uh, bond maturity. However, if interest rate falls, the issuer will replace the costly bond which requires payment of higher interest by substituting it with a floating rate bond that requires to pay R which is the risk-free rate plus a spread corresponding to the credit rating of the issuer. Now, uh, here we have uh, a receiver swaption and uh, there is a short position in the receiver swaption that is the receiver swaption seller not the buyer and we are assuming that C that is the coupon rate is equal to the exercise rate in the receiver swaption plus a spread. So if interest rates rise, the receiver swaption will not be exercised by the buyer of the receiver swaption and hence uh, we see there are no payments uh, indicated here. However, if interest rates fall, the receiver swaption will become valuable for the buyer of the receiver swaption. In that case, the seller of the receiver swaption will be receiving uh, R which is indicated by an up arrow here which means that it is received and will uh, be paying X that is the exercise rate uh, in the uh, receiver swaption to the buyer of the receiver swaption. So the net cash flow for the 
uh, seller of the receiver swap sheet here will be R minus X because he will be receiving R and he will be paying X. Remember, uh, the seller here has basically lost uh, in the uh, receiver swap sheet because the uh, receiver swap sheet is in the money and the counterparty that is the buyer of the receiver swap sheet has exercised it. So, uh, seller is receiving R and paying X. X is the fixed rate and R is the floating uh, rate. Now, synthetically, the uh, issuer of a callable bond can make uh, the callable bond a non-callable bond if he combines it with a receiver swaption uh, and takes a short position in it. So if the uh, issuer of a callable bond uh, shorts uh, or sells a receiver swaption and we assume that the coupon rate on the callable bond is equal to uh, the exercise rate uh, in the uh, receiver swap plus uh, the spread. So in this case, uh, the callable bond can be converted into a synthetic fixed rate bond that is non-callable. Now let's have a look at the um, synthetic non-callable bond here. So you see if interest rates uh, rise the bond is not called by the issuer and it will continue to pay the fixed rate which is C. However if the uh, interest rate fall the issuer will then issue the floating rate debt that pays R plus S. Now in that case because the issuer also has uh, a short position in the uh, receiver swap sheet, so the cash flow from that will be R minus X. So uh, if we combine uh, this with this we see that R plus S is the cash flow from the floating rate debt and that is negative. However, uh, from the receiver swap sheet, the issuer will receive plus R and will pay X. So if I just uh, simplify it further, it will be minus R minus S and plus R minus X. So this these two crosses so the net cash flow left is X plus S which we know is equal to the coupon rate. So this is why we see C here and this is because that the net cash flow when we combine a callable bond with a short position in receiver swap sheet, will give us uh, the net cash flow equal to X plus S which as we are given here is equal to the coupon rate. So that is how um, the um, receiver swap sheet here can be used to take away the callability option from a callable bond and make it a non-callable bond. Similarly, uh, we can make a non-callable bond a callable bond by adding um, a long position in a receiver swap sheet. We can therefore synthetically aid or eliminate uh, the call option from a callable bond using receiver swap option.
Now, we are not going to cover the pricing of swaptions, which is quite advanced uh, at this stage here. Uh, but we know that to price swaptions, we must be using uh, models that are used to price options on bonds. A forward swap is basically a forward contract where two parties agree to enter into a swap uh, at a later date um, at a rate that is agreed today. For our MPK example from the previous slides, let's assume MPK commits to a three-year pay fixed receive floating swap two years from now. As the forward swap is agreed today for two years, for the three-year swap, the fixed rate to be agreed in the forward swap must be estimated. For this, we need the term structure of spot rates today from 1 to 5 years. These rates are important to get the values of the zero coupon bonds to be used in the calculation of the fixed rate. These rates are the spot interest rates for 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 years. However, we require to estimate the uh, interest rate for year 1, year 2 and year 3 two years from now. So basically we are interested in estimating uh, the forward rates uh, two years from now for 1, 2 and 3 year. If I draw the timeline here, it's just like this. So we are here uh, and we have five years. So we know the spot rate for year one, the spot rate for year two, the spot rate for year three, the spot rate for year four and the spot rate for year five. So basically if somebody wants to borrow for one year, this is the interest rate at which they can buy a borrow. If someone wants to borrow for two years, this is the interest rate that they can uh, use to borrow. And for three years, this is the interest rate. For four years, this is the interest rate. For five years, this is the interest rate. Now, if somebody wants to borrow for one year, two years from now, that is if somebody wants to borrow here for one year. So what is that rate? So we need to know that rate today. Similarly, if somebody wants to borrow for two years, two years from now, so basically we are talking about two years borrowing here and two years from now, so that is F2 and we need to estimate it today. Similarly, if somebody wants to borrow for three years, two years from now, so we are talking about here, borrowing here for three years. So uh, this will be F3. So we need to estimate these three rates and then using these three rates we need to estimate the uh, corresponding zero coupon bonds values and then we can estimate the fixed rate. So uh, let's move forward and here we see that we can estimate the a uh, one year forward rate from the um, three years and two years spot rate. The formula here is uh, simple and uh, we are saying here that F1 is equal to one plus the uh, interest rate for uh, three years borrowing in the spot market today multiplied into the number of days that is 1080 divided by 360 and then dividing this by 1 plus the interest rate for two years borrowing into 720 divided by 360 and minus 1 uh, 
we don't need to multiply it by 360 divided by 360 uh, because uh, it's already annualized rate however we, we're still doing it so uh, if somebody wants to borrow for one year two years from now the rate is 10.8 percent if somebody wants to borrow for two years, two years from now, the rate is 11.61%. And this is estimated as the um, in spot interest rate for uh, four years borrowing divided by the uh, spot interest rate for two years borrowing. Similarly, the three year forward rate uh, is estimated by dividing the five year spot rate by the two year spot rate uh, that is we use these two in the formula and get the calculation done so it is 12.38 percent and the, this one is 0 0.1161 so basically if somebody wants to borrow for one year two year from now this is the rate if somebody wants to borrow for two years two years from now that is the rate and then if somebody wants to borrow for three years two years from now that is the rate now if we have a look at this uh, the interest rates are increasing as the maturity is increasing so it is indicating uh, an upward uh, sloping yield curve now using these uh, uh, interest rates that we have estimated for uh, one year borrowing two years from now and two years borrowing two years from now and three years borrowing three years from now we estimate as the zero coupon forward bond prices now remember these are zero coupon forward bond prices these are not spot prices of the bond these are the forward prices that is the price of a bond uh, two years from now that will mature at the end of year three and will have a par value of one so what will be the present value of that given the one year forward rate at the beginning of year three that is at the end of year two so here we see that the uh, zero coupon bond value that matures in uh, one year two years from now is 0 0.9025 a zero coupon bond that matures in two years two years from now is 0 0.8116 so this bond here will mature at the end of year four and will pay one pound so the present value of that one pound two years from now at the forward rate for two years is 0 0.8116 similarly uh, a zero coupon bond that matures um, in three years two years from now is 0 0.7292 this bond will mature at the end of uh, year five and uh, we want to know its value two years from now so we are using the three years forward uh, rate to estimate its uh, value uh, two years from now so these are our z1 z2 and z3 that we are going to use uh, in the uh, estimation of the fixed rate in the uh, forward uh, swap so the rest of the job is easy we know the formula the fixed rate is equal to 1 minus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 that is equal to 11.08 percent Now, uh, in terms of application of swaps and forward swaps, uh, these can be used to anticipate the needs for a swap in the future. So you can enter into a swaption or a forward swap to lock in a fixed rate that you may receive or pay, uh, which of course you expect to be better than the uh, market rates prevailing at the time uh, for market swaps 
So one of the use is to anticipate the future needs for a swap and you want to be in an advantageous position uh, using the uh, swaption or the forward swap. Both swaptions and forward swaps can be used to exit a swap if it is not favorable, if the interest rates have moved against um, you, you can use swaption or forward swaps to exit such uh, swaps. Swaptions can be used as a substitute for options on bond, uh, like we saw that uh, a pair swaption is like a put option on a bond and a receiver swaption is like a call option on a bond. Similarly, uh, we can use swaptions to create synthetic callable bonds or puttable bonds or we can uh, remove uh, the uh, callability option from uh, a callable bond synthetically. Also remember that uh, forward swaps do not require the parties to exchange any cash and these are forward contracts and only show commitment. On the other hand, uh, options require parties to exchange cash in the form of the premium to be paid for the call option or the put option.